so you've decided to murder your parents. You're young, you live with your mum and dad, and you've had enough. Enough of what you ask? That's not important. All you really need to understand is that you are so emotionally worked up that you feel capable of putting an end to the people who gave you life. So, how do we go about murdering your parents? Step one, you psych yourself up. This is a big deal and you need to get focused. Maybe stretch a little, maybe do a little yoga. It is important to be in a healthy and clear frame of mind when committing parricide. That's Latin for murdering your parents. Yeah, you studied for this before you realised that it was weird that you were studying for it. Step three, you work out a method. You only seem to have blunt objects at your disposal, but that's all right. There's something beautifully ironic about your father being beaten to death with his own golf club. You decide to go with that. Step four, you celebrate. You did it. You murdered people. Even if it was a little more difficult than television makes it out to be, you still managed to do it. And it's like your therapist always said, it's important to celebrate the little things. It's called self-care. Step five, you have a little sit down. Yeah, the actual uh, killing part actually took a lot longer than you thought it was going to. There was a lot of uh, dodging and running about. At one point you could have sworn you heard your old PE coach Mrs Jensen screaming Lift your knees as you chased your parents around the bedroom. Which if I'm being honest added a layer of stress the situation really didn't need. Step six. You transport the bodies. So you need to get to the bodies downstairs to bury them in the garden but you have grossly overestimated how strong you are. It takes you five minutes to realise that you can't carry the bodies and 15 whole minutes to actually drag them to the top of the stairs. God, you're unfit. Maybe Mrs Jensen was right. How are you going to get the bodies downstairs? Step seven, you get creative. You find a perfect way to get your parents downstairs by turning them on their side and rolling their limp bodies down the steps. This takes a very long time because their limbs keep getting stuck in the banisters. It is rather undignified. Then again, murdering them was undignified too, so what can you do really? Step eight, you make your parents lighter. You have finally got them downstairs, but you still need to drag them to the garden. And you start to figure that like, they'd be a lot lighter if there was less of them, right? And then you remember your mum's hacksaw in the shed and you get an idea. Step nine. You get your parents into bits. You don't want to think about how, or how long it took, or how long it's going to take to get that stain out of the carpet. God, that stain. That deep, sticky. Do you even consider pouring more blood onto the carpet just to make the whole thing red and make the stain go away altogether? But then you started crying and you had to stop. Step 10. You marvel at just how much of your parents there is. They won't fit in the holes that you've dug outside and they never seemed that big or inconvenient when they were alive and moving around but now you're running out of places to hide the limbs. You've got three hands down the back of the dresser and two torsos under the couch cushions already but there's still so much. God, there is still so much of your parents. How is this happening? Did they multiply since dying? Have you done this? Did you accidentally kill someone else and just not realise it? How would you even do that? How? Okay. Calm down. Focus. What you need is for there to be less pieces of your parents, or less solid pieces at least. And then you see the blender in the kitchen and you have another idea. Step 11. You wish for hindsight. Particularly in that if you're going to blend pieces of your parents, you put the lid on the blender first. Cleaning up this mess will be... well... You see, whenever you wipe up a bit from the floor, a bit from the ceiling drips down and makes it all... 
gooey again. And even the stuff on the floor isn't really wiping up. I mean, you scoured your entire kitchen for the best thing and all you could really find was bleach and even Dettol's 99.9% .9 germ-busting technology just isn't quite cutting through your late mother's face. Step 12. You sit down and have a little think. Maybe murdering them was a bit of an overreaction. Maybe moving out was the more reasonable option. It's too late now, and your head hurts, and your arms hurt, and there's this smell that's seeping in throughout the entire house, and what you wouldn't give to just go back to this morning instead of picking up a golf club to bludgeon your parents with, you opened your laptop and spent the morning writing angry supernatural slash fic on Wattpad instead. But no, you had to do murder, didn't you? You always have to take things a step too far. This is just what your therapist would have said if she was alive. Step 13. You call the police on yourself. When they pick up and ask what's the emergency, you start sobbing and say that there's bits of dad in your hair and you can't get it out. You tell them that it's all got a bit much, that the yoga just isn't quite calming you down, you've ruined a perfectly good golf club and your mum's face is on the ceiling. They say they're on their way. It's probably for the best. You probably weren't cut out to be a murderer anyway. <laughs>